thank you, judges. Why they are the, being in a position of P5? For example, America, because they beat Japan or those kind of German or those kind of things, really arbitrary in that way, because they get the money or like the like these kind of thing power from like like um how can I say like battling down to the um my the how can I say um the weak country or those kind of things. Because they did that, they get the power and those kind of things. So in short, they exploited those kind of countries. So in long, long history, right? So like they are in the position of P5. But after the World War II, like they have been so long being in that position for about 100 years. They have given the pro getting the profit of those kind of things. But um, look at the reality. America is not even like paying so much money for the United Nations, right? Because like rather, like Japan is paying so much money for the United Nations and like they are contributing to the more to the like the maintenance of United Nations or those kind of things. So like we believe that this is really problematic thing because of that like the historical exploitation, like those country is being the position of having the really um com commandance of like um global policy or those kind of things. So we are very happy to support this motion. So first of all, like yeah, setting up here is like of this motion is like we would like to get rid of the P5 and rather like share the the vote to the every country and like they're gonna decide by the voting a majority vote is going to be like um ex um you be in use or those kind of things is a setup right so let's go one by one first of all I'm gonna talk about why equality of global policy making should be ensured and second of all I'm gonna talk about like status quo like veto is how they it is harmful for the situation of global policy is making and so on and my partner will clearly talk about the, like counterfactual things how the things will go really efficient in our side of the house which is giving the distributed to the power to each country each country but let's go one by one first of all why equality of global policy making should be ensured first of, first analysis here is like because like they, they each country one almost 20, 200 countries has their own profit and though they are suffering own they have own suffering or those kind of things but like the if the veto is going to be occur like for example like look at the reality of like Israel or Cold War what will, what did happen it's like some small country in like Soviet or, or those kind of things was crying for the help or those kind of things and America or those kind of like countries didn't want to intervene into these kind of countries but simply like Russia didn't allow that right and the opposite was same things right so like the, this was the reason why the Cold War prolonged and prolonged right but the purpose of United States nation United nation is like maintain as good maintenance, efficient maintenance for for like the global policy policy making or those kind of things. But like if the veto is happening, the own like on, only five big countries is giving the like the very selfish decision to like um make the po um, global policy really inefficient way or those kind of things. But the reality is the own country has their own profit and want to seek their profit. And like in the most case, they are so suffering because of the battlefield or like unnecessary attacking from the, like the talk about like the um, South, no, 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 South, Middle East or those kind of things. They are really crying for help. But like, so we believe the job of United Nations is like they have to help and like to for these kind of crying country or those kind of things and in order to like by the way to giving the truth to maintain sustainability of global policy or those kind of things. Yes. So this debate is a trade-off between like remove the veto and I like, give new permanencies. Yes. So do you give permanencies to like Southeast Asian nation like you give permanency for all nations in the world situation? No, we are as I said in the like the setup, we are not giving to the like veto to these kind of countries, like just giving the right to like voting and every kind by giving by every country giving their vote, like they're gonna set their policy by the majority alliance opinion or those kind of things, right? And then let's continue because second point is why contribution is done based on responsibility of helping countries not on the monetary or not on the power because like the print like the adoption of principle of poor and rich like please look at the reality of the like japan or those kinds of things rich people are paying the so many taxes for for people like for the country right they time they pay two times three times taxes for these kind of people why did, why is that because like they are ex exploiting like somehow like by the 
stop excluding foreign people and those kind of things. So they are paying to maintain their society in much more better way, they organize their society in much more better way because they are getting profit historically and like currently. So they are giving the money or those kind of things. So the same things will happen because like because like United Nations is giving uh, United 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 States is giving money. That would be the reason, right? Because like it's how so many people have so many like country has their own opinion and those kind of things. So like they have to like the contribution should be done based on responsibility of having help helping country every country. So second point, the status quo veto is hard harmful because as I mentioned, like please um remind the example of Cold War or those kind of things. Every country was really selfish and also the example of Israel or those kind of things. Every country was so selfish and they were like they connected historically and each each country has a connection of historical reason and they just simply selfishly use that reason to veto and like the make the mess to the make the mess to the um, security or the maintenance of global policy making or those kind of things, right? But the reality is some country is suffering too hard and they are crying so hard. So like we believe that to like to give the room for these kind of countries to like vote to the which to reflect their own opinion and like make them listen to what they are crying for, it is really essential. So we are very happy to propose. Thank you. Thank you for a nice speech. So next, I would like to call up the leader of the opposition. I hope we are with this seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. So we think the the, uh, the right to beat power, power of the P5 is necessary to um, as a checking outbound system within the Security Council and to sustain the uh, peacekeeping uh, peacekeeping and that's why we proud to oppose this motion. The three things uh, three things to talk about. The first, why is uh, why removing uh, the beat power of P5 is something problematic. Secondly, a uh, wide right to beat of P5 is necessary and necessary. And thirdly, uh, thirdly, uh, why uh, expanding uh, Security Council uh, is more is uh, is more better solution to uh, pro uh, solution of the problem open government mentioned. So before that, some rebuttal. So PM said uh, they. PM say uh, they will give the right to a right to uh, a right to vote, and it, it is enough. But we think in the, even in the current gener even in the current situation, uh, uh, all countries have right to vote, and we think what is the difference between uh, zero paradigm? We don't think any uh, uh, marginal difference, and what is the impact of their argument? And secondly, uh, their assertion is that just removing the or uh, just removing the big power of P5 is enough to uh, balance out the power within the country. But we think even if we take, even if we removing the power of P5, the P5 countries still have enough power to influence other countries. For instance, for instance, because they have uh, proxy power. For instance, uh, for instance, a country, uh, a country which are uh, depending on the China with, in terms of economy, and in that occasion, we say. Uh, if that that kind of country should follow the China's opinion and China's interest, and we think even in their paradigm, uh, P5 power are already uh, enoughly um, excessive, and we think uh, we you know rather, uh, um, and also we say to 
balance of that kind of power imbalance, our problem is much better, and which is uh, proven by proven by my third argument. So let's move my first argument. So why are removing B power P5 is something problematic? So firstly, we say P5 is the most P5 is the country where most contribute to the peacekeeping a uh, peacekeep PK. So which means like I after taking this proposal, the P5 country lose incentive to contribute to the peace uh, peacekeeping. So because uh, because uh, they are in uh, mm, uh, they, they lose incentive to contribute to PK and with, which means as OG considered the sustain the peacekeeping peacekeeping system is more uh, so important. So we we say to sustain the peacekeeping system, uh, we say uh, removing big power is uh, problematic. Uh, no, thank you. And also, as as I mentioned, even if in their paradigm, uh, P5 countries still have still have enough power to influence other countries. So it means uh, even in their paradigm, they use their power and proxy power, and they prolong discussion and uh, you know decision making are diluted, and we say uh, that is also problematic. <clears throat> so let's move my second argument. So why right to B of P5 is necessary? So firstly. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, firstly, uh, we say it is uniquely P5 has P, P5's uh, right to be B is something necessary. Why? Because the uh, US and Russia and China has different form of state or different interests. So we say that five countries' uh, mutually exclusive interests or uh, interests can be a uniquely work as a checking balance system. For instance, if US offers certain if U.S. offers certain policy, Russia or China will will stop or um, will will work as a checking balance system, and we think it is crucially important to not not um, to to keep, to to prevent a uh, peacekeeping system go to too extreme and too radical. So we think that kind of uh, uh, P5 right to be is necessary. Okay, under your part. What kind of country and how number of country do you introduce as new common seed in the Security Council? Ah, so it, it is my third argument. So, okay, so let's move my third argument. Why in our paradigm we can prov provide a more, more better solution? So, uh, in a, as a model, we want to give some, uh, uh, we, we will give, uh, we will give uh, new uh, permanent seat to you know the, um, mm, uh, mm, uh, many other you know uh, the country where which were uh, recently developed. So we say in current situation, or Japan or Brazil or Germany, uh, we say these other countries has getting more power and. Uh, growth is growing, and we think uh, in uh, today's society, uh, other countries have more uh, enough power to as independent country, and we think uh, giving the right to be uh, giving a right to be a new permanent seat for this country, we think it is uh, important to uh, 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 giving a right. So we think why it is something good. Because, as I mentioned, uh, this country has, to some extent, grown up and have enough power to be as uh, to be to independent from independent country, and we say in that occasion, uh, in within that council, uh, this other country can be can have enough uh, negotiation power to or work as checking out balance system, and um, we think discussion or a discussion within the within the council will much better because better and that this country can also be uh, after uh, to prevent uh, such P P5 uh, selfish interests so we proud to oppose it.
Kim Boy and Ice Beach. So on the left side of the right, Kim Boy, welcome to Kim Boy and Minnesota to extend your cash within seven minutes. Here they are. First, responding to the POI from the from the opposition, they ask us why is it not better to just include like um, other countries and etc. But we believe that it is very hard to set a criteria of which country can be included as a new permanent member. It will definitely increase conflict, and we already need to solve conflict and rather than that the deciding of how many seats to cause even more conflicts because no in no way countries will be happy and even if you actually in increase countries it's definitely also developing countries it's just going to further marginalize smaller countries and this is even worse off so let me tackle down the three main arguments coming from the opening opposition first of all they told us how the um there can be balance out of the power anyways, but we need to be compar comparative because anyways, like the, the um, more influential countries will, will have a power exercised on the countries and they will definitely in influence. But which way is better for smaller countries? That's, that's considered. Right now, it's just whatever the um, strong five countries says, and if it's not good for them, they will just veto and nothing will, and nothing will be happened to like um, um, increasing peace operation, etc. No decisions will be, will be made. But if not all the countries are equal, these countries, in order to buy either buy the vote or increase, like make sure that these smaller countries help and support what they want to do, they will offer benefits for these smaller countries, such as ODA toka, and like for helping them to in infrastructure. It's like a trade-off. It's much beneficial for them rather than now they just share the um, a lot of power, but contributing nothing back to the smaller countries, and just because they are powerful, so they can enjoy all the rights without. Um, giving responsibility. So secondly, they talk to us about how the five members are very are justifiable to have such power because they contribute the most. But we believe this is not the case. Because right and responsibility is different. For instance, in the in the country, taxpayers who take who pay too much more tax, they don't get their vote does not equal two votes. It is because everyone shares the same responsibility. And why are they um responsible paying much more because they actually gain much more. They have much more of a say in the in the, in the, uh, in the international arena. They have much more power and they're actually taking a lot of advantages from those countries, such as building factories and exploiting their labors and etc. They are able to thrive to their situation today because they are exploding and they are taking advantage of smaller countries. So they definitely have this responsibility to pay back and try to help back the smaller countries. And also, Actually, a lot of issues that's happening today that is actually caused by these big countries, for instance, France. Right now, Congo is having conflicts because in the past colonized, um, it has divided the country and causes conflicts. And actually, these countries are the root cause, and they are even much more responsible and have to um, help. Lastly, they, took us, they told us about the check and balance system, which is not going to happen at all. And it is not check and balance at all when we look at it right now. Because check and balance is to, supposed to be two countries. They have, e uh, I mean, different, different sides have the equal say to something. And then like they um, try to make a negotiation and something that try to see if you're like abusing your power or not. But right now, the current situation is when there's a decision that needs to be ma made, one country, for instance, China, just say because all oh, this issue is related to Taiwan, so we are not, no matter how much compromise, or not, no matter what happens, we're just not going to do it because it's Taiwan. And no other, so they veto it. And this can never be passed because this is the thing about veto power, that one country says no, no other country can say anything else back to it. And what will cause is just every country, big, the big five countries, we just abuse this power. For instance, Russia has something against with this, um, uh, for example, like Ukraine or anything, they will just, everyone just exercise this veto power. This is nothing going to be a check and balance. It's rather just nothing will actually be passed because these countries just for their own benefits, for their own like international relationship and their own problem with like other countries, they will just stop anything from happening. And this is extremely bad because this is extremely bad and will be explained and is already explained by my partner, which I'll explain right now, is how how like the emergency that my partner has already said, people are suffering because of the lack of, for instance, peace operation, going to countries to watch, to make sure that um, uh, the conflict groups are being, are being um, peace is being remained in those places. So what kind of after plan are we talking about? Is that all countries enjoy the equal rights and decisions. Okay, sure. 
right now, what share of the data we're using by 1980 is being stored there, or are there some more domain confusion? So why do you think that also a high part of it is using some of the kind of going back to capture the middle of the data? Yeah, because you know probably Then we go back to our side of how actually decisions will be better and more efficient. Because I've told you right now, nothing is happening right now in um, peace operating uh, missions, which is important and necessary to be happen. But because of these five countries, nothing can be happen. And and but if we allow like quality, all countries, when there's a decision that needs to be made, it's just like democracy. Everyone will put in a vote and. And we believe that actually countries have incentive to vote for the good cause because as we have said, these countries who actually join these, they are believing, they are consenting, they are a member because they believe in peace and they actually contribute to these organizations and pay money for it because they support the ideology that all citizens should be safe and basic human rights for individuals should be guaranteed. So they have the incentive to Good, for a good cause, but unfortunately, right now, even if like all countries concede to oh, help this region, but the big five countries, they have the visa power, they are intruding these uh, missions to be carried out, and this is extremely harmful for countries that's like suffering from um, conflicts, etc. So, so, since I have pr we have pr um, proved how the emergent need of, pe of more efficiency in the UN because there are people actually suffering. And we have told you what the opposition have told us about the um, check and balance system does not work and veto is actually against check and balance system. And the responsibility is uh, the more pay that these countries go to does not necessarily equal to that they deserve more right. And also um, the even if there is still p power issues in the in the international relations, we believe that we're not trying to solve that because that's impossible to solve. But rather, it is better off for smaller countries because in order to get support from the smaller countries, bigger countries will have to do something to help. And in the long term, this is actually very helpful for the smaller countries. So we're very happy to propose. Thank you. Thank you for a nice speech. So next time, we'll write this all up. The United Nations in this debate have two choices. Once they take out the veto, or secondly, they reform the councils and like, make new permanencies. So the burden of proof for government side in today's debate is to show like, why the veto, by removing the veto, they can resolve all the problems. And it's better than like, just giving more permanencies for the people or like, for the other nations. And we don't really think that like, opening government in today's debate fulfill the burden to the large extent. So like, that's why we already taken down them in the first place. I'm going to fulfill the burden of proof on opening side by showing you two extensions. One, I'm talking about why even if you remove the veto power, but because of the concentrated power within the Security Council, we still lead to the deadlock of like, discussions, and like, then all the harm that like, opening up government and maybe the government want to like, say, still going to remain the same. But secondly, I will talk to you like why by giving new permanencies to a certain actor, I will explain who we're going to give this kind of permanencies. It's actually dilute like the power that already be concentrated in P5 and give more check-in balance, even though we accept like they still got the veto and we think that like, comparatively those kind of circumstances is much better from outside of the house. But before that, a lot of rebuttal for opening government. So they claim a lot of things about like veto power. They claim the case of Cold War, of Israel, of Taiwan. But the thing is that they have to prove for us like, why in their side, how even with other veto power, like those nations, going to abide into like the policy that like the Security Council are going to make, recognize that those 
nation is already have a very strong power in the enforcement. They don't really care so much about the UN policy in the constitution. If you look at like Crimea case, even though a lot of people against Russia policy of Crimea, but like they just go to that kind of thing and wreck like disregard of like the UN warning or something like that. We don't really think that just by removing the veto power in the enforcement, like you're going to resolve and like make those kind of countries like allow those kind of policy to happen in the enforcement. There are thousands of ways for the P5 to actually use their power in the enforcement, and the only result for those kind of things is to dilute their power and like to make them like not strong enough in the constitution. And we don't think that like, veto, like, like taking out the veto, is something that like just like make a huge reduce or damage for their power in the constitution. Secondly, they say that like, veto power is not a strong check and balance because like, they can just veto anytime they want. But we have to recognize that they don't really have the incentive to veto so much. The reason behind if they veto a certain policy against other nation interests, they will have the chance that like, other going to retaliate against that nation and veto their policy that in favor of their nation as well. So if China always veto US policy, then US also have the same incentive to veto all policy of China's in the first place. So which means that like there will be a deadlock and like, no one wins in that same circumstance. Which means that like in that circumstance, actually P5 and like within the P5 actually have a consensus and compromise of like to what extent they're going to use a scale veto or like they don't really have incentive to like just because I hate that nation I'm going to veto all the things so that, that's why we seem to think like a lot of collaborations or like a, a, like a lot of agreement within China or like US on the like, like within the security council moreover they talk about small countries they tell like we need to give the vote for small country recognize that that is already the SQ. I have to say, like, when you join UN, you already given the vote. Like, you actually have the right to vote. I have the right to vote for a certain nation that you favor in a force. But that is not the debate that we're talking about. The debate that we are debating on today motion is about security council. We think like that is a very high bar to take if you talk about security council. Because it's not like, like about voting or not, but security council also like the one who control the discussion to decide to what extent we should like deploy PKO or like some like some kind of like decision to inter like, like intervene with a certain nation. Which means that like a, they need to actually have a lot of power and capacity to decide and like, to like persuade people like in the sky of like UN like, Council to actually like follow the decision. But secondly, they also need to have a huge contribution for the like, Security Council in the first place in order to get the scar power. Because no one going to listen to you if you don't actually pay something for the scar thing. That's called reciprocity in the first place. So we think that like that is exactly the reason why there is a very high bar when we talk about Security Council. That is not going to be easy to have all the small countries they're going to talk about to like, it, to, like join that kind of discussion. And therefore, we don't really think of like opening government side stand, like, case stand. So, Let's talk about removing P5 power. Why is that this sort of problem? My partner already gave you the material on that field, so I'm going to extend this kind of thing. We think that like if like in the constitution, even if you remove the veto power, still like the permanent seat within the security council going to remain the same. And even if you count non-permanent member in the first place, there are already like some kind of old face, like for instance, like, like the old nation that actually in favor of like a certain country like within the P5. They have to say anyway they're going to have the proxy power in the first place, like they will have favor of certain like the one country within the P5 that are actually economically or like like politically support them or also the soft power influence of those kind of things. For me for that, yes. I want to I want to know your mechanism how you can make consen consensus to take operation action. Uh, yeah, I want to explain that in the second part like why we can actually like make us kind of think better in ourselves to help. But just moving on to like my argument. So we think that like in that kind of circumstance, at best when you remove the veto power, you just make the situation even messier. Because now when they already have a certain interest and they don't really want to compromise, instead of like start to veto that kind of thing, they will lose more vote for their side of the house, which means like the discussion is going to be very, very prolonged. Like you have just say, like instead of like just veto all like the policy against Israel, now US actually have to take further steps, influence other nations to actually follow their side, vote for like the like, 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 not vote for like like vote policy against Israel. So like the prolonged like the prolonged process in that kind of thing just make the deadlock more and more severe in your side of the house. So moving on to the second point, like, that's going to answer your POI. Why we think of like giving permanent seats for like other nation going to be better. So who are going to give the provinces? We think that is the new rise nation. We call that G4. That is to say, uh, Germany, Japan, India, and Brazil. We think that like those nations in the first place, as they came at like the, the, like some are loser of global trade, but now they actually give them like the right to come back to the international field in the first place. But secondly, they also have enough power and actually geopolitically and also. 
politically more independence from those we fight. They also, they, they also have their own interests and they also have the right and have the power to criticize the decision making by P5 in the first place. What does this mean? This means like it's less likely for the P5 to influence those nations, like the new communities, to follow them and to vote for their certain policy in the first place. And more of they're going to have more check and balance power within that kind of thing and then make the poll that make the P5 less likely to use and have no less incentive to use the veto power and more incentive to compromise in the first place. The reason behind is again, if they veto a certain thing that against those kind of new members, they just simply withdraw, the, 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 they just simply go again, that's kind of thing, withdraw their support for PKO, which is severe damage for the UN in the first place so that they have enough bargaining power to actually check and talking that counter again those kind of P5. We think that is much more better discussed and therefore lead to much more better policy. Very, very proud to oppose. Thank you for a nice speech. So next time write three more up on the member of the government. So we your guest within seven minutes. Yes, Thank you, Chair, and everyone. Unfortunately, we have to realize some fundamental interests cannot be compromised, even if we have some criticism, even if we have some discussion. The prolonging the discussion just make sacrifice on the ground, just like criminal and Rohingya people in those minority areas. We say this represents unfunctionality of the United Nations, especially Security Council, the very important actor in this debate. We say even if we sacrifice some voice of citizens, we sacrifice some interest of some country in order to operate justice by the United Nations, we have to take the majoritarian uh, decision. That's the reason closing government or standing for standing for. I have three arguments in my speech. First, what is the role of the United Nations, especially Security Council? Secondly, why including the new permanencies like India, Japan is problematic. Lastly, when majority decision is comparatively better way, pragmatically, principally. Before moving on to my argument, clarification. I don't know whether OG setup is good or not, but as a rule, oh, there's no definition challenge, and she cannot fabricate new model. And so we have to follow this. That's why we take the same stance for the opening government. Then third clarification for opening opposition. There's no clear mechanism how India, just adding India, Japan, Germany, can really criticize, has the ability to criticize, have the ability to deny the very strong power of the United States about kind of things. Actually, no sort of from the other house. Moving on to my argument. First, what is the role of United Nations? We say United Nations is not an international organization to examine what is justice. It's not the job of the United Nations, especially Security Council. Security Council is a place to operate with a ju collective justice, which already we assume that people within that kind of organization are consented when decide to enter this kind of organization. They're carrying out that kind of justice based on their uh, carrying out this kind of operation based on the collective goods like the protection of the fundamental rights or life or those kind of things is the most important role of the United Nations. The problem currently is that even if we think this fundamental right is deployed in the other area, in the minority area of India, we cannot take action. This will perpetuate even, op op even in opposition program that is problematic. I will explain why this is true in my second argument. Why including a new permanent seat is problematic? For two things to say. First, let's be very clear about complex opposition program. Two things to say. First, as I said in the introduction, some fundamental interest 
cannot be compromised. Things like political ideals, like communist, socialist, capitalist society, religious autonomy, but ge geographic initiative. Some kind of interest is extremely important for the company. Just like individual as me, my principle to debate, or my principle not to work harder, is also a very important principle. We cannot be compromised. In these circumstances, we cannot reach out consensus just like today's United Nations. Then all oh, didn't have any reasons how. Japan, India, Germany can criticize. They just said they have a strong independent power. That's why they can criticize. I doubt independency. The many, many countries are still depending on China or the United States economically. They are, um, they are under the umbrella of the United States, for example, Japan, right? The umbrella of the nuclear weapon, right? In these circumstances, anyway, on their side, United States and Russia or China are conflicting with each other. Those kind of people, new members have to follow order of those kind of people. And they cannot reach out consensus on their side forever. Secondly, second context is, we say PKO or ODA or something from their side is not enough to protect vulnerable individuals on the ground because there is a budgetary constraint and there is something which is, uh, the operation they can do is extremely limited, for example, ODA, right? They cannot make maybe active military action in order to prevent conflicts from happening, in order to uh, protect those kind of vulnerable people and societies, right? In circumstances, without alternative way, this vulnerable individual should be oppressed under those kind of contexts. This is crucially problematic. As a result, as I said, Russia arbitrarily interpreted the Crimea in order for the geographical autonomy, and China oppresses the Tibetan people most ever for the initiative. This is victimizing many individuals. We say, lastly, and my argument, majoritarian decision is comparatively better way, pragmatically, principally. First, pragmatically, we say on all the closing government for the first time carry out operation to protect people quickly. As I said, maybe, maybe, because P5, the, the, there are many people who like Western, maybe we have to sacrifice the opinion from those kind of Asian people, the Russian and the China. Maybe Western and the United States interest will be prioritized by the majority decision. But what do we say? It's good to protect fundamental human rights for the people. Maybe China cannot win in the election or sort of voting. Then those kind of interests of the United States will be, in, will be prioritized. They will, they will have the mutual intervention, the Tibet and the Rohingya. But we say we can protect life of the individual, which have this comparatively a, a, a universal consent, which is important to be protected. In these circumstances, we say this protection is very important. Okay. Building interests of small countries in, for example, Middle Asia and South America have own clash and have created the tragedy of comments that all countries are not going to have a vote for other small countries' interests. Why? As I said, in this society, if we realistically think about the many people are really economically have a tie, because the many people are security, for example, Japan and the and the United States, they are protected by the big power. In these circumstances, there are some so even though the small country is a friend of the big country, right? That's why those kind of without and the very many random consequences will never happen. In circumstances, we at least we can protect those vulnerable individuals in society quickly. Second thing is to say the principle. We say it's pity, right? Because some fundamental interest of country cannot be attained on our side, but it's necessarily evil, just like democracy. Democracy also have to seek, have to welcome a trade-off. For, for example, the welfare, like Ruki Graphite, someone said, right? In these circumstances, it is important to compromise some rights for the sake of the overriding just, justice, the protection of the fundamental rights. In these circumstances, on their side, very one selfish country can veto, one selfish individual can represent every single one of that person to deny very important operation of justice. We say this is injustice. That's why for the sake of operation of justice, we are more than happy to proudly propose the motion. Thank you. We are the only team to clarify what interest the United Nations should stand for. United 
nation should propagate for human rights protection. Obviously, this is okay. I mean, in that circumstances, we don't think Congo or the Georgia is the only issue they should tackle for. Rather, obvious human rights abuse conducted by the Russia, by the China, is con uh, uh, prolonging right now. And the greater, of, uh, most great obstacle of that is the existence of veto for, uh, possessed by those two countries. Therefore, let me give up to help those people. Let me cooperate with that country. Let's crack down those countries, even if that causes the withdrawal and antipathy coming from those two big countries. We think that's justifiable act. Two things to talk about. Firstly, why new introduction of the new emerging countries into Security Council is not feasible to prevent or stop human rights abuses. And the second three metric comparison, what interest the United States should stand for, given that why removing the beat power from brutal country is the best solution. Let me explain one by one, debatters be integrated. Firstly, why new introduction is not efficient. Three reasons why. Firstly, beat still exists under opposition paradigm, ladies and gentlemen. In that circumstances, when the interest of the strongest country is conflicted with the interest of the United Nations or the human rights abuses, necessarily that beat is conducted. Closing opposition came up here and told you that veto, uh, existence of veto is making the incentive to cooperate with the other countries and the incentive to stay, ladies and gentlemen. We don't think that's actually feasible enough to cause the, uh, enough amount of cooperation from those two countries, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, Actually, in that circumstances, we cannot conduct any kind of active intervention into those human rights abuses, ladies and gentlemen. Only what we can do is just peacekeeping operation. We cannot offend the opponent country who are actually abusing human rights abuses in, con uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, for example, the Myanmar or the uh, uh, Crimea uh, conflict or the Tibetan, that imprisonment of the citizen is going on and the restrict of the freedom of movement is actually going on, ladies and gentlemen. We don't think it's actually enough bargaining chip for strong country to cooperate and withdraw that as a stay in that United Nations and the uh, Security Council. But secondly, even if withdrawal is going to happen under our paradigm, it's okay, ladies and gentlemen, because it's better than doing nothing to protect those people who are suffering right now and prolonging that discussion within the Security Council means, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuously victimizing the people who are suffering on that ground, ladies and gentlemen. We say that's a crucially important. Moreover, ladies and gentlemen, let's co consider the worst case of scenario under their side of the house. Yes, of course, Congo or Georgia is going to be prominent conflict zone, but the reason why that conflict is prolonging right now is the inco uh, incomplete intervention is conducted by both United Nations or the, uh, the China or the Russia, ladies and gentlemen. That imperfect alliance is the source of, prolongment of a prolonging of the conflict, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, let's start war immediately, let's uh, finish war quickly, and that's where we can negotiate negotiate and reconstruct that conflict zone. Therefore, we think that is good under our paradigm. Second reason why this new introduction is inefficient is precisely because the more number of countries we hold in Security Council, the more time is necessary to decide the uh, direction and the policy of the Security Council, ladies and gentlemen. P typical example is the foundation of the PKO. The reason why PKO is constructed is precisely because we no longer be able to decide e even single uh, policy of that United Nations, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, we think that is bad under their paradigm. Moreover, sadly, newcomer of Security Council is highly influenced by the economic giant China or the Russia, ladies and gentlemen. In that circumstances, those beat is held by those kinds of strong, brutal countries. We think that should be, uh, that shouldn't be occurred. No, thank you. Moving on my second issue, metric comparison. What interest is especially important. Opposition, opening opposition supposed to support, uh, supposed to stand for the better discussion or the balancing out power. We think it's the long road of the Security Council. Firstly, because the those discussions is already conducted in the United Nations body, and each country has the right to vote and the right to participate in that discussion. We don't think that is the exclusive role of the Security Council issue. We don't think that's actually true. 
Secondly, there are some issues which we should no longer compromise, even if some countries strongly want to reject, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that, uh, that's what we are talking about from the closing government. Obviously, those free, uh, freedom of the movement or those right of life is uh, essentially uh, threatened under that circumstances we want to intervene. However, because of the existence of veto that is deprived, we say that is possible to solve under our paradigm. Why is that so? Okay. The reason why the China and Russia veto interventions to quasi-democratic countries is they want to keep economic power in these countries such as Korea acquire their weapons, or they want to keep allies of the world safe. Why passing resolution by majority of groups means that this mission work in the government? Yeah, probably in the very Uragawa, uh, they will support by sending a weapon or like that thing, but one, it's actually not moral high ground. In that circumstances, they cannot do publicly, and therefore, those power of the supportment is limited under their paradigm. And moreover, under our paradigm, we have a very good justification to intervene uh, without those veto, ladies and gentlemen. We recognize that is the direction United Nations want to support. In that circumstances, we say, eventually, we can solve that circumstances, even if war or the conflict is going to happen. Why possible under our paradigm to protect those people? Firstly, because we can decide quick intervention and active intervention on that conflict zone, ladies and gentlemen. The currently United Nations and Security Council does not have power to actively intervene in that circumstances because we need the consensus. We have to get the consensus in Security Council and we have to gain the permission coming from the invaded states under their paradigm, ladies and gentlemen. That's possible under our paradigm because of the uh, very strong number of the liberal democracy country. Secondly, the monetary capacity, all concern, China money is huge. Yes, but that uh, we don't need such unbelievable amount of money to protect, to focus on only one the conflict zone. In that circumstance, little bit money is go down under our paradigm, but still we can quickly intervene and protect those citizens on the ground. We think that's good. Thank you. Many countries exist in the society. <laughs> Kenya, Nigeria, Mexico, score, and other things. But we think that veto should be in, uh, only be given to the strong state. That is precisely because strong states have the power to destroy the resolution coming from the United Nations, precisely because of economic ties and money that is contributed to the United Nations. When the withdrawal from the UN happened, and no longer money and PK is going to be to the UN, that is precisely the timing where the UN's function is going to collapse, and all the benefits that the uh, government side of the table or trying to ex uh, explain are going no longer going to happen, but we think conflicts are going to be worse in, counterfactual is going to be far worse than the government paradigm to our to explain under the status quo. That is a precise reason why closing the opposition won this debate. Three things. I'm going to talk about how counterfactual is precisely going to be uh, problematic in their side of the house. Secondly, I'm going to talk about how, in precise matter, what Xi Jinping and Xi Jinping told you and why their, for example, extension were one, aligning with OG. Second, the purpose are simply no longer being uh, there. For the timeline, I'm going to review to the opening government. So, what were our extensions? We talked about how in the counterfactual withdrawal happens. Uh, we think that um, because there is no longer a reason for, to actually be there, but rather we think those like money are going to be used to the U UN, well those interests are going to be directly conflicted to the United Nations. Then what they said was that it is ideologically compromised, things are no longer going to be agreeable. But what I'm told you in this debate is that there are agreeable de decisions in humanitarian crisis. For example, North Korea, like in humanitarian crisis, and the China agreed with that fact, right? We think the government have never engaged 
again in the fact means that there are, for example, like ideologically like in, uh, uncompromisable dis resolutions, but we think there are agreeable conditions. And we think those agreeable like uh, 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 agreeable resolutions is only going to function in our side precisely because there's no longer a budget. We think as long as Russia, China, US are the main, main contributors of the financial budget of UN, and when those countries withdraw from the United Nations, that is when the, the budget is significantly going to decrease in, uh, in their side of the house, meaning there's no longer going to function. As long as in our side, when there are agreeable resolutions and have a lot of money, we can send PKOs to those countries, we think that is comparatively better within our side of the house. Sure. Why agreeable issue? is the rejected and deconstructed by the China and the Russia precisely because that is not relevant for their interest. Therefore, the only issue of the conflict in this debate should be the uh, case which actually China and Russia is brutal. Here, there is a agreeable decision, but but there are identical conflicting decisions right now, and those money, their money are going to be hugely used by the United Nations precisely because they don't have the like ability to veto that nation. That is the precise reason they are going to like withdraw from it, right? The point is there are there are agreeable decisions, but the agreeable decision might not be beneficial compared with the budget they give to the United Nations. That is the precise reason why they withdraw from the United Nations in the very first places. What second what MO have told you in their second analysis is how the in the way of opposing resolution, the proxy role, for example, in uh, Congo is going to happen. We think Russia, China versus United Nations are going to happen. Why is that three, two? We think what, I'm going to explain three reasons why proxy war would happen. Number one, well, which was told by the MO, right? Because well, number one, they talked about how economic ties within with Congo are important, for example, oil and weapons, right? That is how. And second, we think they want to create allies of rogue nations, right? And thirdly, they have well, they want to have more national security in uh, uh, in their own war. We think as long as they withdraw from the United Nations, they no longer have a power to, for example, vote and veto the United Nations, right? So, what are the reasonable stance from those like Russia and China to take to like, to protect Congo from from the intervention of United Nations? Is to create proxy wars. Why is that? Why is that problematic? Because those proxy wars and conflicts between Congo are going to create more uh, death of the casualty of that nation, right? Which is which we think is important because all the teams have never talked about how it is problematic in a very precise manner. But we, what we have precisely talked about member opposition is that people are going to die because of that proxy war, right? That is, we think that is important. We think that is, we are the only team reported why that is problematic in the very first places. No longer. Thirdly, we, think we already told you how it is no those like PKO to the United Nations, a PKO from the United Nations are problematic in their side of the house, is because it is no longer going to be sustainable. As long as Russia and China try to keep Congo as their own like national security places, and you are uh, try to uh, uh, try to inter, inter, interrupt the resolution of the UN. That is when those those like PKOs are no longer going to be stable in that state, and UN have no choice but to withdraw those PKOs from that state. So I think that for all those reasons, we think the counterfactual in their side of the house is particularly going to be problematic. We think everything we are uh, diff, uh, better than OO is because OO thought about it is going to be in inefficient. But what we have told you is that it is not just inefficient, but it's the fact that it's going to be far worse than that. We think that is how we have told you the counterfactual is going to be better or worse, and we think that is the clear difference between opening opposition. Closing government. The problem with closing government was that uh, their arg most arguments were quite like us similar to opening government when they tried to say that the small countries are receiving harms. But the only thing that they added was purposes, right? But the purposes of collective justice. We think there are two assumptions here. Number one, all states are included, especially the major states like China and Russia. Second assumption is that UN has international power to control the world in itself. But we think we, the most argument already cut it those two assumptions, but as long as the United States, United Nations are no longer have, going to have a power, and no longer the, all, all states are going to be included in that United Nations. But we think our uh, what well, we have MO told you is how the purpose is going to work as a matching system, right? We think that purpose have never come from opening opening half. That is why it's better than opening half. From over we think that those purpose coming from MO was going to be a cut the assumption of purpose coming from closing government, which is we think it is strategically uh, better than closing government. So finally opening government. They their goal was to uh, represent small countries' benefits. But we don't we don't think that is going to be true, right? Firstly, because the superpowers are anyway going to like dominate discussion, even if they stay in the United Nations, right? Because they have they're going to they have the power of the like, domination of the discussion. Within that, is no longer going to be better in their side of the house. But secondly, they said that all countries have an like, incentive to vote for a good cause. But we don't don't think that is to be true. It's because there are tragedies, as I pointed out in the POI, where, for example, above half of like 
half of countries are relatively poor, with UN budget is limited. For example, when like Nigeria tries to receive financial aid, then other small countries like Kenya or like called Morocco or Syria are going to oppose that because they want the money uh, opposed to Nigeria. We think that tragedy of carbon cr creates that the voting system will never work as long as small countries want their own budget and never want the budget to be provided in other countries. But we think it is going to be rather better on our side of the house because we think in opposition paradigm, where Brazil are going to represent South America's interests, India is going to represent Middle Asia's interests. It's because those leading nations are going to represent because there are economic and political ties within that region. If we, for example, try to put interest on those uh, countries, that is how in our side of the house, at least when they expand the like, members and include those from India, India are the ones who represent the small countries of that region. For all those with the report, there are going to be critical harm to those uh, government products, that is a critical extension, but we will we'll prove how expansion is beneficial in our side of the house, we're more than happy to oppose the motion. Thank you for your speech. So, the best finish. あの、M201 から B208 